day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey everybody, I'm glad you came back. This is part B for what we did on our Bible study on the 28th of June. And and what was we were we was we approached this is talking about the cost of discipleship. And 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 we really started talking about <coughs> from Black Lives Matter, uh, police brutality. <coughs> uh, we 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 talked about behavior that we all need to try to do when we confront things in life and you know I'll, I'll, you know one of the things that we talked about or at least I, I think I mentioned you know it really is not about a black white issue it's about humanity and it's about the fact is that <clears throat> some people sit there uh, when we use the, uh, the you know the quote N word, we 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 talk about ignorant people. Well, in this case, I'm about ignorant people of a certain color, but in reality, the key word is not uh, the color; it's the ignorance <laughs> that we 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 that people try to to use to bring people into jeopardy, bring people into risk factors. You know, we're talking about even right now, we're talking about with this pandemic, uh, with COVID-19, one of the biggest things that we were sitting there looking at was that uh, <clears throat> it's starting to spike in so many different places. Florida, California, uh, Arkansas, not Arkansas, well, I guess Arkansas too. Arizona, I know. Um, some of the southern state, Texas. And, you know, we, somewhere along the line, we had turned the, the uh, COVID-19 in some kind of political uh, game ball and, and not look and calculate the risks of people's lives. I mean, we want to get the economy up, but how can you get an economy going if you got a pandemic that can go out of control and we sit there and put ourselves in jeopardy and, and not calculate the cost? Because you can't you can't keep running a business if you got COVID-19, you got people affected. You can't keep running a business if people are getting sick. You can't keep running a business if people die from this sickness. You, you have to sit there and say, what, what is the priority? I got to get it open. Well, how do I get it open? Let's get this thing under control. That's how we have to approach it. And I don't think it any other way. Because you can sit there and say, well, we're going to go through it. You know what? You got, we got almost 400 million people in this country. In this world, there are billions of people. And people are dying because of this disease. And there's nations out there, countries out there, that sit there and say, we got to get back to work, but you got to get the situation under control because if you don't, then you're going to die and you won't have a business. You won't have people to, you'll go to your business if, you, if you're dying. So you can't be ignorant to it. You can't sit there and change the narrative. And that's one of the things we talked about. You can't sit there and, 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 and try to continue to, use violence to, 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 to or right change the narratives. We're talking about the, this particular segment with some of the people uh, with the monuments being torn down and, and the fact that how they come up in the first place because somebody want to change the narrative. We talk about vain glory on that. That's what we're talking about the fact is when we sit there and recognize what are we trying to hold up? What is it we're trying to accomplish? Why would we have rallies where this disease does its best when people condense themselves in large groups. It, it doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. It's not being calculated. 
when we sit there and do things like that. But that's what we've been doing. And we sit there and say, we have to, you don't, you don't, you don't have to die. We have to bring things, we gotta consider things and do it right. So we were focused on, uh, on part A and now there's part B on the cost of discipleship. And the fact is the vain glory of trying to keep and maintain a status of something that is corrupt, opposed to understanding that we have to understand the way of God is greater than the way of man. We have to calculate what it costs to be a, a Christian. This is what we did, and I, and, I, and I make sure we do it again here. And it was called the cost of discipleship, Luke 14, 25. And then went a great multitude with him and turned and said unto him, If any man comes to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children, brothers and sisters, yea, his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intended to build a tower, sit is not down first, and count as the cost whether he has sufficiency to finish it. Lest happily after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it began to mock him, saying this man began to build and was not able to finish it. We, this country is built on the freedom of religion. This country is built on the principles of freedom. This country is built on the bill of rights of, of all men having a right to prosper, to pursue life and happiness. You can't have, you can't, nobody, you can't have where you oppress people's freedom. You can't do that and still say that we are Americans. We can't do that and say we're still Christians if we don't abide by the principles that comes along with being what we call a Christian, what we call a United States. United States is the light of the world if it stays with the principles that it was founded on. I ain't talking about the things we did wrong, but the principles that we founded on are on point and right to the right to the point of freedom. We're a Christian nation. And as a Christian nation, we need to act that way. We need to love one another. I don't care if we think that you somebody is worried about whether they're gonna be replaced because of the color of their skin. Because we ain't talking about replace because then that just becomes the worst thing in the world about just replacing. How about we coming together as one and living together as one, being successful as one? Why can't you have what you have? I mean, what's the basic thing? I know some people want to say, well, I want to be rich. Well, you know, those are, those are things that you can thrive for. And I think give everybody the right to thrive for that. Don't try to hold somebody else back because you're trying to thrive for that. Uh, but the basic part of life is we want to be able to live in peace. We want to be able to, to have a life that's comfortable for ourselves and our family members. We want to have neighbors, Lord, than God that we can be in fellowship with and not have to worry about them. We want to be able to drive on the highway and not sit there and, and uh, have people be disorderly. But we can't do that if we sit there and try to say, try to label everybody. We can't sit there and say all cops are bad. All cops are not bad. You know that. But we try to do that. We try to sit there and say all blacks are bad. You, you, we can't do that. You can't label people, and you can't sit there and say, well, the proportionately they are all a majority of them are bad. You can't say that. You hear rhetoric, and as long as you stay with rhetoric, you want to have confusion of being bad, I don't know, I'm gonna say, we're gonna continue to hate. We're continuing to do atrocities. We're continuing to sit there and kill people over minor infractions of, of traffic violations or misidentification. We gotta love, love, learn to love one another. That's what Christ was talking about. We, as you're gonna be a disciple, we're gonna be a Christian nation, we're gonna count the cost of being a Christian nation. We got to understand we laid a foundation and we got to finish that foundation. And the only way we're going to finish it is through Jesus Christ. 
I think I said, I think I read throughout the rest of that scripture. He, he said again in verse 32, else while others are yet far away, he said, I read of 31 too. Or what king going to make war against another king sits not down first and consulted what is able to, to able with 10,000 meet him that comes against them with 20,000? Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sent his habits to desire a condition of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he has, he cannot be my disciple. And we saw about the fact that in Charlottesville, when the people sit there and say, we will not be replaced. First, we're sitting there saying, we're going to act contrary to God's will because we're worried about what we proceed to have. Opposed to knowing that if we have Christ, we have everything we need. And I know that some of those people who don't believe and don't understand that, sit there and say, no, 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 I can't accept that. Well, you know what? The top of the subject is vain glory. Is it worth losing your soul? Is it worth you being uh, someone who hate other people because of the color of their skin? Is it worth you doing atrocities and violence and deception just because you think you want to hold on to what you have? And that scripture we read earlier said, he said, if you hate, if you don't hate these things, it would come between that versus God then you're going to continue to live in a corrupt world and your soul need to be evaluated. It ain't worth it. So I hope you enjoy part B and we'll get back with you. Um, part C, like I said, the 20th of June, we covered a lot of topics and I'm really, whenever I'm breaking this down, even these commentaries, just trying to keep up where we were going. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and we will catch you next time. Amen. God bless. Bye-bye. I want, I want to distract you yes. by doing this. All, a lot exactly. of stuff is distractions. And it, and it slows down the real focus on the real problem. Yes. Because Trump is the real problem. So because all these side things have happened, it kind of slowed down the real focus. So now people, you know, this whole spiritual need is, is, uh, is detoured. So yeah. I don't know. I mean, Trump is not the real problem. He's the not real the real problem, problem. Is the Republican Party going to get more? Yes. Yes. By not uh, going against it. Yes, but then. And so then it manifests itself to be almost uh, law. Yep. Yeah. One person gives the whole party power to where it, I, all this um, violence and stuff and sloppiness, the reading of history slowed down because of the sloppiness. There's like so many correct ways that could have been done to where the real focus is already Repeating the same type of repetition of what always made common people interested in and attention to. Look how many that we spend time on is standing. The main focus of the solution is the authority of how they're treating the people, making the them happen, is what needs to be addressed. Not black, I mean, Black Lives Matters, but the, the, the training of these officers and the real jobs, the real things that need to be mattered are getting slowed down because of all the simple common stuff that are happening in the streets of the people. You know, the church is trying to get stronger to stop all this pettiness that's happening and that's how they're winning. That, that vainglory, I never heard the word before, but it, it can be, it can be that power that they create 
because they know what we're going to pay attention to that's going to distract us from the focus that's going to give us the strength because they don't want the power of the people of color. The black man, the brown man, look how strong we are. They're trying to keep us down because you know how much power. I mean, strong in 2020, the people have come. So the same, same level has, you know, they're trying to distract on purpose. And I think it needs to be noticed. The media draws you back from same purpose is get the authorities, the courts, and all that. That's where you're going to, that's where the change is. The change is in the streets. There, there is a, and this it gets really tricky because when you think in terms of vainglory, if you look at it from the kingdom perspective, vainglory is any glory that does not assist in getting the person saved. You know, the ultimate fix is, is the human heart. We dealt with that at the study the other night. These guys, this racism is a symptom. Um, the, the brutality that the policemen exercise on people is a symptom of what's really, what's really wrong with them. And what is wrong with them is their heart is really not, they have corrupted hearts and they have no fellowship with God. So right. when, we, and when we start to th think about what the church's job is, the church's job is actually to hook people up with Jesus so they can get fixed. <laughs> you know what I'm yes. saying? So there anything you know. that we do that detracts from him, any glory that's given, any any advances that we make that we would consider to be an advance that does not turn a person toward Christ, we have just received vain glory and we just exercised ourselves in vain glory. Because you can fix laws, but if your heart is bad, you're not gonna follow. Exactly. If, if there's no integrity in you, you, you can't impart integrity to the system. We are trying to fix broken and, and what the Lord is allowing us to do is see that no matter what form of government we have, whether it be democratic or, 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 or fascism, fascist, or what do you call it? Uh, fascism. Fascist, yes, or dictatorships or kingdoms, without him, they're all going to corrupt. Exactly. We now have, I have a comment. All these sheriffs, all these police officers go to the church right here in Warner Rockets. Oh, White, truly. sheriffs, black police officers. They all go to a church. All these churches and everything, how do we come together as a community and talk about what's going on? Well, and, 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 that, and that's what I want to say, L. L John, for a second. That's what I'm saying is that the, the be called a Christian, we, we need to understand that if we, we have to deny ourselves, and that's what those scriptures was talking about, and and when you even have Chris, the, the, the photo ops <laughs> put the Bible up for the photo ops, mm -hmm. it was very evident that we was trying to take what Christ is talking about and put it into a different narrative, a different flavor that's contrary to God's will for, for what I call vainglory. In fact, just to answer her question, but I've never heard Van Glory before. I'm going to share the scripture and I want Brother Jackson to read it for us. You see it, Brother Jackson? Yes, let me uh, move my screen out of the way. All right. Oh, it's in there. Okay, out of Galatians 5, 26. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. Did you want me to continue reading? Yes, sir. And then from Luke chapter, uh, chapter 9, verse 23. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? For so whoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his father's and of the holy angels. But I tell you, 
of a truth. There be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now take that to the streets. Amen. <laughs> and that, that's the streets. <laughs> Put that in your pocket and see some change. And, if I, and I might be a new Christian, but if I'm going to walk, I put that in my pocket. And that's what I'm talking about with a bandana around my face, Psalms 91 on my door. And this is what I want to become. I mean, that's what, uh, that's good. Thank you. Amen. Because that's, that's what you're trying this, to this say. This is what the good. community, I live in Warner Robins now. This is what I want to be able to share with the community when I'm in the park and walking my dog. You know, we walking around with bandanas. I ain't trying to fight nobody. Right. Mm -hmm. And 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 that's why I say he that's saying is that that's what he's trying to say is that you try to you try to create a false image, and you try to make that say that's Christianity, and it throws people off because Christianity is based on loving one another. Chris, it's not about this trying to dominate one race or one group of people. It's not about trying to sit there and say, uh, uh, these people got violent tendencies, so we gotta treat them this way. It's not about trying to change the image of the police. It's about the police changing its image to that which is following Christ. In other words, you are here to protect. You are here to, to help our society uh, and we call decency and order or law and order is to maintain order. But when you become part of the problem, then, then, then we, we fail as a Christian. Because the Bible said that the, the a, a, a police officer is the, supposed to be, the, a, a, in a form of society, a minister. Right? Yeah. He's supposed to be the one. He's supposed to be. And some of them do, Chris, have that image supposed to be and trying to be. But they have mixed in this terror and wheat in which you got a group of people who believe that the only way to, to maintain order is to oppress people that don't look like you or think like you and don't have the same values of you. In reality, the real true values is love. Question. Are they not right? Are they're they right. are they are the person? I mean, I'm not saying I, I don't personally think that. I think it's immoral, but that's from a Christ perspective. But from a world perspective, doesn't power dominate? Isn't it dog eat dog? Isn't is isn't, isn't it the strongest shall survive? Isn't it? Isn't that how the, the system itself is set up? I mean, are they are they not? Are they are they? really that far off to say that if they let some people do what they want to do they're going to take over hey Dan, have it's... we ever seen the situation manifest itself why they got police and perfect they're going to fall break into your house it's obvious that if they allow people of color to exist as they that they will fall short i mean if you can a person into your system so that it's systematic extremely hard for success and those people still achieve greatness then that that there is a fear in that mm -hmm. so then they have to they have to go to a whole other extreme to make sure that their things stay status quo so it's obvious that by nature people of color just rise we rise we, i mean we we endure and we we achieve despite the situation or the circumstance i think it's just a part of our dna um, yes true i mean i think i think the, the well, i want to say it's true in the sense of that <laughs> i think it's true in the sense that you're showing you've been a coward if you don't want to sit there and run your race on an equal footing if you we talked about a couple of weeks ago chris you on there was saying is that it's like that rabbit and the turtle again <laughs> you you already you know you think about it 
400 years, somebody was held, a group of people, us, was held back, not allowed to read, not allowed to, to be free. And then all of a sudden, Chris, you're free, right? But but you you didn't give us that you didn't get us have education for our school and we didn't have a family structure so we in other words we started off but as in, in the hole in a race right this in other words if there was a race chris we we was in the hole right yes <laughs> physically and, 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 and all we had so 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 we accepted that we accepted chris, matter of fact, think about it chris and i think brother as you said that's where the fear comes from is you started off, these people started off in a hole. And despite the fact that all you need to go is run your race, you kept, the turtle, the rabbit keeps coming back to, yeah. to hinder the turtle. Yeah. Because the turtle, Chris, just talking about really this human nature, can continue to press forward. And if you, if it really is a race, they're going to pass you because of their endurance, because of their tenacity, right. because of their willingness. And you're fearful of that. And you shouldn't be fearful because really it's not about trying to take over. It's about trying to live a, what, what do you call it? A, a, a life where everybody has the right to prosper is what God's kingdom is all about. Now, from our perspective, yes. if that's what it's about. But then we think in terms of the people who conquered the country, these were not benevolent people. These, these people were, they were evil. They committed, they almost annihilated the indigenous population. They enslaved blacks. So what do we expect them to do in this generation? Or what do we think they're going to think like? Until, well, well, until their hearts and their minds are changed, they're going to they're gonna perform the same way. They're not, to them, they are protecting their investment. They have conquered this nation and they're going to occupy it at all costs. And whenever they see a threat, they put that threat down. So who's going to be the biggest threat? It's but the slaves, know, the ones that get the worst. But they first came here, I think Because they were being oppressed. Yes. Some were. So, oh, yeah. Not they all. know. Not all of them. They Some were just cooked when they got they in. Correct. The nobles were that that's all they did they put themselves in position so that they these people who came and so-called conquered the uh this continent all they did was put themselves in a position so that nobody can put them in the position that they were that they left and that's how we're yeah, and that's it but they, even to the point of trying to change history, because how can you discover a continent where people already are? 